Welcome back, everyone. Multiculturalism is a wonderful thing. It allows us to move closer to a world without borders, closer to utopia. And only with multiculturalism can we ease the guilt of the past and fully realize that diversity is our intrinsic strength. And since everyone thinks like us and has the same values, there's no need to worry about what other cultures bring in, even those cultures shaped by Islamic ideology. And there's no need for newcomers to assimilate. Just open the borders wide and sit back and bask in your self-congratulatory light and keep your daughters inside at night. However, in spite of the inherent virtue of multiculturalism, I see other sentiments expressed on this very channel. A quick word search targeting comments in Europe came up with these. This comment refers to an imam hate preacher from one of my previous videos and says that people who speak about the dangers of these imams are labeled hate mongers. People warning others are banned from entering European countries to speak because somehow speaking against hate teaching and preaching is hateful and a risk to national security. Meanwhile, the hate preachers who talk about murdering Jews and the Kufars are protected by freedom of speech and considered peaceful. Won't be long until the extreme values of Islam are being preached in central London's upcoming Leicester Square Mosque. Do you also remember after Ariana Grande's performance, the Manchester bomb happened by an illegal immigrant Muslim in London? This person describes their journey about learning Islam complete with anti-Semitism, taqiyya, and the attitude of Islam toward non-Islamic people and how they subjugate them, as well as jizya and themis. So now, after 40 years of knowing exactly who the enemy of the West is, my government is talking about labeling people like me extremists. At the same time, we have stupid kids, communists, and their terrorist handlers marching in London every weekend in support of Gaza and Hamas. Tens of thousands of illegal immigrants arrive in small boats from Islamic countries on our southern shores and are given shelter despite their hatred for our culture. We are idiots. They have their hands on our throat, but we don't see it. The West deserves to fall. Ten years ago, we lived in a nice part of South London. Now it's a complete orifice through which feces passes. So it would seem that the European doors of multiculturalism are opened wide in part to Muslim countries with what some would say are predictable results, including this one. Islamic terrorism is on the rise in Europe. This Wall Street Journal article is worth quoting at length. Authorities in Europe say they have foiled several terror plots, some involving suspects posing as refugees, raising alarm about a growing array of threats from extremists. In one previously unreported investigation last December, police in Austria and Bosnia arrested two separate groups of Afghan and Syrian refugees who carried arms and ammunition, including Kalashnikov assault rifles and pistols. Investigators found pictures of Jewish and Israeli targets in Europe on some of the suspects' mobile phones, which they suggested were motivated by Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza. This followed the arrest late last year of a group of Tajik nationals suspected of planning attacks on the Cologne Cathedral in Germany and St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna around Christmas. Both churches fill with hundreds of visitors for the holiday season. Investigators said the separate incident suggests Europe's terror threat isn't only growing but also coming from news sources, complicating the work of security agencies. A wave of attacks that hit the continent starting in 2015 was largely inspired and in part directed by the Islamic State, the Sunni terror militia in Syria and Iraq. Now the threat is not coming just from Islamic State Khorasan, Islamic State's Afghanistan-based successor organization, but also from Iran and its proxies in the Middle East, including Hezbollah and Hamas. Both Hamas and Hezbollah have so far used Europe as a fundraising hub and a safe house for operatives. But the recent raids on Hamas suggest those groups are now pivoting to plotting assassinations and sabotage in Europe, directed mainly at Jewish and Israeli targets, security officials from several countries said. At the same time, the case of the Tajik suspects raises concern that terror groups, including Iran and its proxies, are again using the influx of refugees into Europe to infiltrate the region. Most of the Islamic State terrorists who struck Paris in 2015 arrived from Syria and Iraq, posing as refugees, and more than a million asylum seekers applied for refugee status in the EU last year, the biggest number since that time. More recent examples this article refers to include those from Italy, where three oppressed Palestinians with terrorist plans were arrested. All the racism all the Islamophobia. They're accused of being part of the brigades of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs, an organization deemed a terrorist group by the EU, the police said. Their activities included planning attacks, including suicide attacks against civilian and military targets abroad. There is another kind of terrorism at work as well. Let's return to the comments section. You forgot to mention the Islamic grooming gangs in the UK who have been gang raping vulnerable British girls, many underaged, since the beginning 1970s. 
it's still going on. Some women later in life spoke about their horrible experiences. They were taken into council houses, saw Muslim men praying, and then were taken into adjacent rooms to be raped by several men and afterwards forced into prostitution. Some of these Muslims told the girls this happened to them because they are not Muslim. The British government knows about this, but acted out of fear for race riots. A gang of groomers were caught, and three of them were put in jail. Short sentences. When the UK wanted to expel two of them, their lawyers and leftist NGOs stepped in and sabotaged everything. The third cockroach renounced both of his nationalities, Pakistani and British, so the UK is obliged to hold him in custody since he was stateless. We on the continent are getting more and more fed up with the Islamic violence that specifically targets non-Muslims. An excellent resource to learn more about this is Ayan Hirsi Ali's book, Pray, Immigration, Islam, and the Erosion of Women's Rights. In her chapter on grooming gangs, she says, The UK counter-extremism organization Quilliam published a report in 2017 examining the backgrounds of the grooming gang perpetrators. Of the 264 convicted, 84% were Asian, 8% black, 7% white, and 1% of unknown ethnicity. In Great Britain, it should be noted that Asian refers principally to people from South Asia, including India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, rather than from China or Southeast Asia. The 59-year-old ringleader of the Rochdale Grooming Gang told victims that girls as young as 11 had sex, quote, in my country. In Bristol, another told a victim it was part of the Somali culture and tradition for girls to have sex with his friends. A Rotherham perpetrator recited the Quran as he beat his victim. I have an idea what verse he could have been reciting. Judges in both the Telford and Keithley grooming gang cases noted the lack of remorse of the men convicted. On the stand, the men were contemptuous, disrespectful, and arrogant, and viewed their victims as worthless objects that they could sexually misuse and cast aside. The heads of organizations that were supposed to protect the vulnerable warned that revealing the ethnic backgrounds of perpetrators would fuel racist attitudes. It was this fear of appearing racist that provided cover for the grooming gangs. In Professor Alexis Jay's report on the Rotherham grooming gangs, local government staff described their timidity about exposing the ethnicity of the perpetrators. Some self-censored to avoid appearing racist, while others were directed to remain silent by their managers. It took the journalist Julie Bindel seven years to get her investigations into the issue published. Editor after editor told me that they were concerned that people would consider it Islamophobic if they were to draw attention to the subject, she said in 2018. The case of the British grooming gangs also illustrates the persistence of misogynistic attitudes in immigrant Muslim communities. One member of a Newcastle grooming gang told a female ticket inspector, all white women are only good for one thing, for men like me to F and use like trash. Why talk about grooming gangs in a video on Islamic terrorism? Well, given the brutality and objectives of Muslim grooming gangs, I think it's appropriate to classify them, perhaps unconventionally, under the broader umbrella of Islamic terrorism, clearly on the rise in Europe. Let me know if you agree with that classification or not. It might not be too late for European leaders to cast off their fear of being called Islamophobes and take responsible action, but the fact is that there are untold masses of Muslim migrants already in Europe intent on doing harm, with more on the way. What do you think? Is it too late for Europe? Let me know in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.